I was working at a house today and uh, the guy had a bunch of old electronics, like really good old vintage stuff. And one piece he gave to me, he said, here, you can have this. I'm going to do some work for him and try and get some of his older uh, uh, televisions. He's got a real old 1955 roundy color or, uh, RCA set in his basement. And uh, he gave me this little five inch portable set, color set. Doesn't work. Let's see what the problem is. Check this little unit out. This is a Cosmo. No, it's a Samsung, but I'm sure it's Samsung. It's either Samsung or Gold Star. This is a Cosmo brand, five inch portable, they call it a personal color TV. And I had one years ago, but mine was a candle, but it looked very similar to this. And it got used for, my mother used it. She come, I bought it. It was probably one of the first little color TVs I bought. It was one of these things when I was, when I was young, I saved up all my money to buy this little set and it, it probably cost me 500 bucks when I bought it. I mean, they were ridiculously expensive, but hey, I wanted a little tiny color set for my bedroom. I had a little black and white one prior to that little 12 inch Hitachi I had, and I wanted a little color set. So I bought this little small five inch set and thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And it lasted for, for many, many, many years. After long after I stopped using it, my mother took it and put it in her kitchen and she used to watch you know, the soaps and stuff on it while she was doing her motherly things as I was growing up. I don't know whatever happened to that set. I guess it got trashed or whatever, but I came across this one today. I was doing a job at a customer's house and the guy bought this house as is, where is. The house, I guess, had uh, the, the person that lived in the house had passed away and the, the estate went up and the house was just sold as it was. And the person had been a hoarder. And uh, I got the, I was working there today to do some fiber optic work. And I get there and uh, he's got a dumpster out front. And he was telling me, oh, this is the fifth, this is the fifth load of stuff. And I walk into the house, into the basement to go to where his, his uh, media panel was going to be. And in the basement, I just about fell over myself. He has sitting on the floor a 1955 RCA color TV with the round tube and I just about died. I told the guy, I said, I said, if you ever want to get rid of that thing, I said, um, I'm interested in it. Well, he wants to keep that set, uh, obviously, because it's certainly a collector set. So he says, come on over. He said, I got some more stuff. He says, um, so he also had a, a nice old Zenith console set from the mid seventies, I'm going to guess, and a Sony Profile monitor. And he had this little, little TV set. And I said, well, I said, well, I said what do you want to do with that little one? Because I, I collect small color TVs as well. I said, I tell him I got the smallest uh, color TV in the world, which was the Panasonic 101. He says, take it. He says, maybe I'll use you to get you to take a look at the, uh, the old 1955 set. So I should be seeing that come in to do an overhaul. I'd love to have it, but hey, I'll, I'll, I'll overhaul it for someone else. Anyway, he gives me this TV and I want to see if it would work. I turned it on. Oh, I got sound, I got noise, but no picture doesn't matter what I do with the controls brightness is cranked up all the way it has no picture except when you turn it off you see a bit of a flash on the screen a little bit of a flicker I don't know how well it's coming over on camera maybe if I dim some of the lights in here you guys will see it but there's a bit of a flash when I turn the power off. Observe. See? That's all it's doing. So, I think we need to fix this one. See if I can get this one working. And then I can put some of my old uh, Put some of my old video games. I've got three of them here. We can plug that in and see how they look on a little five inch color screen. So let's take this thing apart. First remove the bottom of the, the TV. This is the battery compartment. It's kind of sticking on there a bit. This thing took 10 D, uh, D size batteries. I'm assuming you could probably put a rechargeable pack in there as well but 10 D cells wow 15 volts would be the battery voltage let's uh, get some screws out of this thing
I don't know, really know how these things come apart. Usually there's a trick to this. I can peel the top off of it. Probably a catch in the front here. Oh yes, there is. There's a catch right here. I can see it. How the hell do I get it open? There we go. Okay. Here's the here's the little set inside. It is Samsung. I'm going to um, get a video source. I'll get a color bar generator. We'll put we'll pump color bars into this thing. So I'm just going to use an old video camera that I've got kicking around, which has an NTSC color bar generator built in. Bloody camera is bigger than the TV I'm going to generate color bars for. I think we're going to have to use a scope on this set. And uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to see if I've got any video um, outputs, output signal getting to the picture tube. Because if I don't have a video signal getting to the cathodes on the picture tube, then I have to look into the circuitry. It, it could very well be the picture tube itself is shot or one of the voltages to the tube is missing. So the first thing we can do is we can check the voltages on the cathodes. Uh, they should be about 100 and I think about 150 volts each, something like that. It should be in that. I'm, I'm sure it's probably going to read wrong on my meter because my meter is in need of a new battery. But let's just take a look first of all at uh, what the voltages are. I've got the blue green and red cathodes according to me and I'm just going to ground one probe to the tuner turn on the set and we'll just measure the voltages here on the green I have mm, 69 volts okay it might be a bit low red 65 that might be right for this set actually so they're about the same 69 65 Hmm. Yeah, so they might be okay. Let's uh, get the scope. We'll look and see if there's any video signal that's uh, getting to the cathodes. Get my scope out, and I'm going to connect. I'm just going to use the tuner as a ground because we know that the shield is grounded on this thing. I'm just going to connect my scope probe. I will connect it to, we'll start out on the green just because it's easy to get at here. So here's the green. Now if my probe will stick to it, come on, I'll get it on this top of this resistor. That is the green. Let's take a look on the scope. So I'm on the 20 volt per division scale. It says two volts here, but I'm on a times 10 probe. Turn on the TV. Ah, I believe we have green. And if I adjust the color level, if I turn the color down, that should make, give me a black and white picture. This will tell me whether the color circuits are working. So if I turn down the color, there we go. We have a bit more stability there. That looks like a stair step, a test signal. Turn up the green, now we're only seeing the green signal, that's the color. And if I adjust the, the tint, okay, set this to TV. So now I'm, my scope is looking for a TV signal. And if I adjust the, the tint, you can see it changing in the color level here, of course. Is, So I got a green output, but I don't have a picture. Let's just check the red and the blue as well. Could be the picture tube on this thing, unfortunately. 
and the red. I have a signal for the red as well and the blue also has a signal. Hmm. Next voltage I'm going to check is the screen voltage and see if we're getting our screen. And that is this one here. And oh, I don't see any voltage on the screen. What about this 29 volts? I think that's probably a little bit low. I'm going to try adjusting the screen control here and see whether it changes. It's uh, glued. It doesn't help me. That's what screwdrivers are for. When I said I thought that's a little bit low, I was kind of being sarcastic. That's real low. It should probably be more like about 200 volts. Mm. Okay, now that's increasing the screen voltage. I'm getting a picture. I mean, that looks low for this screen. And I got nothing on the actual screen going into the tube itself. Oh, is the tube bad? I'm just going to look and see if it's there's any shorts here. Oh. Shorted the ground. It's a capacitor on the screen. Maybe that's bad. Maybe this little blue cap might be bad. There's also a spark gap on here. It has got spark gaps on it. There's one there. There's four spark gaps. I wonder, it's either this capacitor, it's either this blue capacitor, if it's not the tube, that is, but it's either this blue capacitor is shorted, or the spark gap is gone. Let's just remove these components and see whether they are the ones causing the problem. So I'm going to make sure I've got no power on this thing first of all. Just connect that so I don't pull the set down. I'll take off this cap first because it's easiest to get at. This is a little high voltage cap, the little blue ones. So. What is this? What is this little bugger? This is a. Uh, you guys see the value of that? One kilovolt, uh, 222. So 2200 picofarad or poof at uh, one kilovolt. Mm. Is it? Is it bad? Let's just measure this with the meter. No, it's not shorted. Interesting. Let's just measure across here still. Something shorted on here. Is it that bloody spark gap? There's this, this thing down here is called a spark gap. We'll just take out the spark gap and see whether the short goes away. So, I mean, they've got, they have, um, any good manufacturer will take these spark gaps and they put uh, heat shrink tubing around them, which they have, and that's to keep dust and debris, because dust and debris getting in this thing was a real common fault that would short them out. But th these ones have got, as you can see, they're wrapped. Come on, camera, you can do it. You can see these are wrapped with a, uh, a piece of heat shrink tubing to keep the gap clear. Well, this is measuring. We got we got some uh, leakage on this thing. It's not shorted, but maybe it was. Yeah, eight megs. Hmm. Just measure this. Uh, 
Well, 10 megs, that's better than a short. Hmm. I wonder if that spark gap was bad. I bet you this was bad. I bet you this spark gap was bad and just the process of removing it from the set cleared the short. We'll put this cap back in and then I'll try this set again. Yeah, I don't lazy. I could get my solder wick out and take this out, but I can't be bothered. Just use the iron to clear the holes. When working with these high voltage caps, you have to be careful not to bend the leads too close to the body as well, because if you if you crack this ceramic um, coating, the the uh, dielectric it will let moisture in and then the component will fail so I'm going to try this without the spark gap because the spark gap is just there to protect the circuitry if the tube were to arc and that may be what happened is the tube arced and uh, popped the spark gap moment of truth let's uh, put our video signal back on this and give this set power and see will I get a picture or not. Turn this thing around so we can see it. Do I, do I try it? I got a solid white screen. Now, it might be the screen control is too high because I was playing with it. Ah, ha 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 ha. That's exactly what it is. I was playing with the screen control to see if the voltage would come up, and I over drove it. We have a picture. Excellent. Let's see what type of what type of a picture I can get out of this by adjusting the uh, brightness and contrast and so forth. Not bad. Beautiful. Looks excellent. Gotta like it. That tube's in good shape too. I don't see any blooming on here. That tube's in really good shape. So what we had on this was this little spark gap had shorted. Now I, I don't know why it shorted. I mean I don't I can I can see through the gap but I don't see anything. You can actually see through the gap there. See that on camera? I don't see anything in there, but it does have this heat shrink on it. But uh, definitely this thing was uh, the fault. This little spark gap had popped. It may have uh, it may have arced over. There may have been a, a spike that came down the screen line. And uh, and nailed it, or it just may have been some you know some oxidation or whatever in there. But, it, but the fact that it's sealed up, see, there used to be a big problem with these when they didn't put a piece of heat shrink over them. You get just moisture would get in, and these things would fail left, right, and center. Old RCA TVs, these things were you know they failed constantly. RCA used to have uh, a, a white strip that had, uh, I think it had four, three or four of them, but it, it, it was just a, a white ceramic strip and it had a, a like a metal top on it that was grounded and the spark gaps were internal and they would, the things would short left, right and center, People, especially in smoky homes. Uh, let's just check the voltages now um, on the, the CRT and just see what the voltages look like now that the set is working. See if the, what the voltages look like, if they've changed at all. Because we saw what they were when it wasn't working. So let's look at the um, the green. Yeah, 92 volts. 
screen. Oh, here we go. 250. See, this was at zero. And the other side of that R704, 250 volts. So there, that was the short right there. That was pulling this set down. And of course, our red, 91 volts. And our blue is also 91 volts. So our screen, as I say, when I looked at that, it looked, it looked kind of low when I was looking over here, coming off the screen control itself. That, that was the clue. In fact, I, I had that clue right away. I was thinking maybe the capacitor here went bad. But in this case, it wasn't the capacitor. It was this thing. And you know what? That's extra parts. I don't need to put that screen control, or that, that uh, protection back in there for the screen. Uh, I'll look through my junk bin and see if I've got one. I doubt that I've got, I doubt that I've got a spark gap. But I did, I do have a, a box full of, like an entire box full of parts and I might I might just have one in there that I can put in but it's not important if it's if I don't have it it's not that the set's gonna fail um, the spark gap is on the on the outputs on the cathodes for the red green and blue what the spark gap there is to protect is it's to protect the output transistors if you were to get an arc through the tube itself and a lot of times when picture tubes are new, um, as they're aging in, you'll get the odd arc inside the inside the electron gun, and you'll get a high voltage spike into the video line, and it will blow the output transistor. So they put these little spark gaps in on the red, green, and blue cathodes, so that if the voltage goes above, I think these trip at around 300 or 350 volts somewhere in there. But uh, if the voltage goes beyond that, because the, the typical uh, output, the video output transistors typically have a breakover voltage of around 375 volts, somewhere in there. Um, if the voltage goes beyond what the spark gap uh, is set to, and that is determined by how much of a gap that gets cut here between the two electrodes, um, it will discharge across the gap and thus protect the video output. Uh, in the case of the screen, there's no transistor to protect. It's getting its voltage right off of the flyback transformer here, right off of the uh, the screen and focus line. Um, it's getting high voltage from the flyback transformer over here. And even if there was an arc on the screen line, it's not going to do any damage anywhere else in the set because that's actually a, that's actually a source. So uh, they, the set can live without this. I can live without that. That's got a great picture. You know what? I'm going to hook up my vintage video games to this. I got a couple of vintage um, these plug and play controllers. We'll see how they look on this little set. Notice on the tuner board on this, this um, TV would have come in a couple of different uh, flavors. If you notice on here, FM low, AM low, with additional components and a different switch, probably a different tuner. This set would have had an AM FM radio in it as well. Voltage synthesis tuning for it. So this was a, a set that was available with a couple of different uh, different configurations and the board is all laid out for it. But of course the components for the radio are missing. You see there's no transistor here and uh, these controls are missing. But uh, it's uh, it was a set that was quite versatile. And like all conventional shadow mask type picture tubes, which this is, it's going to have a degaussing circuit. But in this case, the degaussing circuit is manual. There's a button on the back, and when I press it, you'll see the degaussing circuit operate. Just like that, very quickly. You can hear. You can hear the, the actual ping of the actual... Uh, uh, shadow mask uh, in the in the tube listen and that's how they be gauze the picture tube on this little set those are two switches on the chassis there's one switch at the back here right down here and what this little switch does is this is a centering control watch the horizontal shift when I throw this switch so it's got a horizontal centering switch we'll put it in the middle 
and there's another switch down here which is used to uh, adjust one kills the color burst or crank, I guess it cranks up the color all the way it looks like oh you know what that does it kills the luminance in the middle position and then it kills the vertical this one's used for adjusting the screen bias to set the color up with the vertical killed I can adjust the, the screen control to just make the line visible you know it's a nice white gray color which is correct if the color was off I could adjust the bias controls at the back here there's red green and blue adjustments for screen and for the uh, the bias so if I adjust this you can see I've now made the tube more red and we want to adjust it to have a nice white line so we adjust the red and the green and the blue to give a neutral white line and then flip the switch back to the run position and now we have a perfect color balance picture I'm gonna put this one together now so that nothing gets broken on this this is certainly a collectible piece and this is mine so this will go into my collection of small TVs I now have in my collection of black and white a half inch a one and a half inch a two inch flat um, tube from a, a watchman a four inch watch cam I have a four and a half inch black and white a couple of four and a half inch black and white I have an old 12 inch black and white TV from the mid 60s with a VCR or VTR that goes with it and uh, I guess the biggest one I've got I got a couple oh I got a couple 10 inch black and white security monitors a 12 inch security monitor um, what else do I have that's I guess that's it for my my black and white sets for my color CRTs I've got a little one and a quarter inch beam index monitor that I'm still waiting to get the sensor to make it work in color that should be here this week I would think um, one and a half inch Delta matrix CRT smallest color CRT made uh, I don't have a Sony 3.7 inch indexatron tube I'm looking for one of those to add to my collection this is a five inch inline gun CRT I also have a 8 inch Trinitron and I have a couple I think I have a 13 inch Trinitron and a couple 20 inch Trinitrons including one a flat 20 inch which was the last of the Trinitron sets I've got uh, I think I've got three three Trinitrons a 19 inch and a couple 21 inch and I've got a, a couple of other little 13 inch sets that uh, I should really sell to the gamers because I know that the game the game guys love their CRT sets but the small ones go into my collection because I, I just think these these little CRTs are kind of cool and uh, they're cool let me put this one together then I'll hook up my video game to it we'll try my luck at some of my little vintage 8-bit games that are built into little controllers I have three of uh, these plug-in game controllers two license and one bootleg the bootleg one's got about 
15 games on it, but only uh, only a couple of them are actually any good. The racing games are are pretty lame, but it's got a it's got kind of a Donkey Kong clone, and uh, it's got a uh, it's not asteroids, but uh, I forget the name of the game. But you're shooting. It's a space game. Yeah, here's a prime example. After turning the set over when it was on, I've created a magnetic field on the tube itself just from the Earth's magnetic field. You can see the purity is way off. If I reach around the back and press the degaussing, watch what it does. It should clear that up just like that. That's what degaussing does. Let's plug the game into it. 15 and 1. It's a uh, it's got a bunch of games on this thing here that are, some of them are pretty lame. But some of them aren't bad, like this one, Arrow Engine. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus a bit better on this. Okay, now you can see it a bit better. But it's not overexposed. These are the only type of video games to play. The old arcade games, gotta love them. I know this is a knockoff, but hey. And there's just something about, these gotta be played on a CRT. On a LCD screen, they're just not the same. And on a plasma screen, they're just not the same. They gotta be played on, on a CRT set. Crank the color up. Oops. Of course, the other, the other one on here that was uh, a, a clone of uh, one they called it Mr. Potato. One day of Mr. Potato. This game looks an awful lot like. Uh, I don't know, is this Donkey Kong, Kirby, one of those ones? Got me. Game over. Missed that one. Ah, completed level one. Now we can start all over again. Of course, I always found that Pac-Man was a little bit easier to play when you were on a smaller screen because you didn't have to, you really didn't have to look that far. 
right? You can see everything. Ah, uh, kind of messed up there, didn't I? I got trapped. That doesn't happen very often. I'll get them to come for me. Not good, not good, not good. I might be able to make it out of this one alive, but nope. Got me. I haven't played this game in a long time. And the last plug and play games that I got was this other one. This one's licensed, which you can see. Spider Man 3. And it tells you which buttons do which. It tells you which buttons to press, like A, A and B together. To, so it tells you which buttons do which. I, I've never played this game, so. So there you have it, my little 5 inch Cosmo Color TV is now operational again. I can uh, put the camera on here, I got the camera on, I can turn on the camera and actually get a picture off this thing. I think. Camera mode. Oh, this camera is huge. There. Now this camera has a crappy picture. So say this camera, not a very good, not a very good camera. It's very old. It's uh, this is an old broadcast single tube broadcast camera called a DXC eighteen hundred. It was uh, Sony's answer to RCA's little single tuber ENG camera, but uh, I guess they did okay. This is a a Satacon uh, a mixed field Trinicon tube, and uh, it's not bad. This tube is this tube is kind of bunged up though. It's got some burn in. You can see it right in the middle of the screen there. Right, this tube is kind of foobard, but for a single tube camera, I guess it did okay. At one time, this camera was about, I think it was about five grand. It wasn't cheap. Anyway, my parts collection. You know, bins of parts over there on the wall. And more bins of parts. Yeah, it's the lens on this thing is a pretty rough shape. 
Thanks for watching.